Hello everyone, welcome back to Tux Riders. In this video, we want to start to work on our finite element project. And as the first step, we want to create the helical uh, shape, the geometry that we want to use for the transient heat simulation. Let's see how we can do that. Okay, as I said in the first video, we will use two techniques to construct, to build a geometry. And the first one we, is, we will use Salome to generate the, the geometry, the helical geometry, the spring-like shape. And then we will use some of the algorithms that are available in Salome to generate the mesh as well. And then we will export the mesh and later on we will use the mesh in various finite element solvers to perform the transient heat simulation, uh, simulation uh, heat transfer simulation, sorry. And uh, in the second technique, we would use FreeCAD, a very comprehensive um, computer-aided design and computer-aided engineering uh, framework, or uh, let's say a suite. But uh, uh, in order to generate the mesh, we will still use Salome. So we export the mesh, the, the geometry from FreeCAD to Salome, and then we will generate the mesh uh, in Salome. So in this video, we will start with Salome first. And uh, then in the next video, I will present a alternative solution. But yeah, you can use either one. But generally, yeah, if the shape is very complex, I can say, yeah, FreeCAD can be more user friendly to generate those kind of stuff. But Salome has also great CAD features. So let's uh, run Salome. Uh, I have already uh, showed you how to install Salome. And uh, yeah, this is the environment, and it is Shaper is the one that uh, is the fee is the cat features inside uh, Salome. It has a very nice parametric design, but unfortunately, uh, it's not possible to generate a spring shape, spring-like shape in Salome, and also in the geometry, which is uh, even more basic than that uh, than the Shaper, but. Uh, in order to do that, we can use the, the Python interface of Salome. And uh, that can be straightforward. There are lots of codes, some codes on the internet, let's say, that uh, you can use to create these uh, spring-like shapes. And uh, one of them, I'm not sure if I found it in, uh, in a forum or an official website of Salome, is, um, is this one. Oops, sorry. Uh, yeah, this one. And uh, mm, yeah, uh, this is a code that has two functions, make helix, uh, which is called from uh, this make spring function. And uh, what it does, yeah, it creates kind of base and because generally uh, these kind of geometries can be constructed. Let me show you on the geometry you want to create. So this is the geometry. and. Uh, for these kind of geometries, what, yeah, uh, it's usually the way that people create these kind of geometries is uh, we have a base, which is in this case a circle, and then we have a path, and then kind of cat uh, operation, usually called sweep or follow a path. This circle is replicated all over the path, creating this shape. And uh, because this feature is not available, as I said, in the Salome uh, user interface, we use this code that does that, that, does that actually, as you can see here. And uh, in order to call it, this is the function that calls the, this is the statement that calls the make uh, spring function. And as you can see in the input are radius, height, rotation, direction. So here is the radius is 50. So the radius of the base that is going to be rotated around. And then this is the height. And then uh, the third one was uh, called rotation. Sometimes in soft software programs, it's called pitch, as you can see, as you will see in the next video in the FreeCAD uh, 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 environment in uh, user interface that's called pitch, but here yeah, the code has called it uh, rotation. It means number of rotation that you want to have here. And when it is 10 multiplied by 10 times pi, it means that yeah, 2 pi is a full diameter of the 
circle. So ten pi means um, five rotations. And as you can see here, it's actually the five rotations: one, two, three, four, five. And when it starts, they are exactly in line. And then uh, the direction also implies that which direction you want to go in in this code. And uh, yeah, this is the code, and it works pretty nice out of the box. And uh, in order to to run it, you don't need to, to really open a terminal or write, run this Python code. The way that we can run it is through this user interface of Salome. So we need to go back to the this Salome, the, the home page kind of home page. And here we will have this load script option from the file menu. And the dump study is the reversed uh, uh, operation, let's say, that you can build your stuff in Salome and then by doing this, by dumping this study to a file, you can record all the steps and uh, to, to a file and it helps you to reproduce the whole workflow that you have inside Salome uh, to be replicated somewhere else. But uh, yeah, let's go uh, by Let's go on by clicking the load script on the desktop and then I load it. As you can see here, it says that, yeah, the, the script is executed. We go back to the geometry module and now here we have this spring created for us. Yeah, super cool. And uh, let's uh, have a look at it. As you can see, that's, yeah, this is the geometry that we wanted to have. In order to see its dimension, there is a tool here, dimensions bonding box that computes the bonding box that can be can wrap this and uh, by seeing the size of this uh, bonding box uh, we can see the dimensions of this uh, created helix helical shape for us and uh, yeah these dimensions are very important for us later on so keep this in your mind and uh, yeah, mm, uh, we will see it later because these are very important if you assume that these are millimeter you should use the units that are uh, it, that are written in the millimeter scale. If these are meter or inches, whatever, then you should choose appropriate dimensions and appropriate units. Sorry, for for quantities like the, the, the diffusion coefficient. But at this moment, yeah, let's assume that it is dimensionless. It doesn't really matter. And uh, yeah, this is the shape that we wanted to have. We have already described how you can create uh, groups in Salome and you can label different uh, boundaries. Uh, and I will do this uh, very fast here. So I want to have like one uh, dimension, one boundary here. I click at the type on a face and then I click this boundary, click add. And the name doesn't matter, but I will call it just uh, input or in. And then I click apply for the next one is this uh, this wall at the boundary. We don't need it really for heat transfer uh, uh, simulations. Uh, this kind of simulation that we want to do here. But later on, if you want to have a if you want to have like fluid flow combination and coupling into the simulations, we definitely need this wall as a boundary layer. So I uh, select add here, and the name is wall probably and then click apply and then for the last one it will be like uh oops sorry here and this will be let me select it and this will be the out and apply and close so now we have here three groups this one this one and this one fine and uh yeah that's what we wanted to do in the geometry module and then we go to mesh in order to create a mesh and we select spring and click on this icon to create a mesh the kind of mesh that most of the programs will support a tetrahedral uh, especially in phoenix and freeform that we will start with so i select tetrahedral here and then this so the algorithms netgen the tool actually this is from netlib library and then I click to create a, a hypothesis on that for net gen hypothesis and uh, yeah these are the size of the mesh and it looks fine to me um, I mean that it's, it's okay and but the fineness I will put on fine probably this is a little bit too small but yeah let's first generate the mesh and we will see how it is so I click OK everywhere and then on mesh one, I right click and click compute. So it takes a while, wait. 
If it takes too much, it means that the app, the mesh is too fine, too small, and it shouldn't be really like that. But generally, also because the, the geometry is complex, it takes some time uh, for Salome, in this case NetGen, to generate the mesh for us. So we waited a little bit. Okay, so the mesh is created for us, and it says that um, it has 26,000 elements, and these are number triangles and notes. Notes are more important for us because, yeah, this is related to theory, but in the first order elements, equations are solved on nodes. So this is the degrees of freedom. This is a term we call it. The way that we call it degrees of freedom for each equation, in this case we have one equation heat transfer, transient heat transfer, so this is the number of uh, unknowns that we have in each time step. You will see what I mean later on. So yeah, this is the mesh. The mesh looks fine, I think. And this, this is very, very cool, uh, as you can see here. Yeah, that is, that is very nice. So, uh, uh, and it helps us to, uh, to have uh, larger uh, time steps. We have discussed all this stability stuff in the um, Applied Numerical Computing series. And the last step is to create the, the groups on the mesh. This is the important, the most important part to apply the boundary conditions. And I select create gro groups from geometry because we have these groups already created in, in the geometry module. So I select these three with a shift key pressed and then I click pr apply and uh, close so these are the oops uh, why I have four oh that was automatically created thank you uh, that's very nice of Saloon so yeah in the it's nice that they are already created so I delete them I just delete this con the content of these uh, groups and so I didn't need to 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 apply this, uh, create uh, groups from the geometry. I think this is something that happened also in the previous video that I said that, yeah, this is something that is uh, the, the new feature in Salome, but in the version that I use, I usually use 9.3. Uh, it's not like this, That's, that, that doesn't create groups automatically and you need to select, uh, oops, sorry, here, uh, create groups from the geometry, but here there are created automatically and then this is the input and this is the wall and this is the output very very good and uh, yeah the last step is uh, we will come back to this for different formats but for now what we need is uh, we can have this exported as the GMF file which is a kind of file that you can read in freefem and also with some uh, changes in uh, Phoenix but yeah, later on, when we want to work with different programs, for example, when we want to have Elmer, we need another output. In open form, we need, for example, UNV file. And um, yeah, Phoenix is more comfortable with MSH, we, we, which Salumi doesn't support. And yeah, this is the for, for the open form. But with FreeFam, we can just go with the GMF file and save the file on the disk. And later on, we go back to that in when we want to implement this in FreeFam. So yeah, uh, for this, uh, I think yeah, that's enough for this video. And uh, yeah, this is the way that it works uh, to create this uh, helical shape. And uh, yeah, in the next video, we will see how we can reproduce this as an alternative solution in FreeCAD. And then we bring the, the, the solid here, we mesh it here, and then we are ready to go to, to solve the transient equations. Yeah, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you find it useful. And yeah, see you in the next videos.